Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, this is going to be a quick one, but I really wanted to take a look at and test out this new Raspberry Pi 4 case that I found on Amazon. This is known as the Icon case, and there's nothing super special about this case like, let's say, the Argon 1 or even the Flirt, but what it does have going for it is the vertical orientation and the stand that comes included with it. You really don't see many of these vertical cases for the Raspberry Pi, so that's really what piqued my interest. I ran across this while searching for some screens for the Raspberry Pi on Amazon, and this just happened to pop up, and the price on it was $9.99, so I figured I'd go ahead and pick it up, and we take a look at it here. So like I mentioned, this isn't a super special case, it's actually kind of plain Jane. We don't have any reset buttons or power buttons built in or anything like that, and it's made of plastic, but it does come with this weighted stand that allows you to set this in a vertical orientation, and to tell you the truth, the pictures on Amazon look pretty cool, and that's really the main reason I went ahead and picked this up. So inside the packaging, we get our hardware to assemble everything. We also get a set of aluminum heat sinks and this fan. And this fan is actually a lot bigger than I've seen on other Raspberry Pi cases, so hopefully it's not too loud. But we will be able to configure this at 3.3 volts, which won't have as much airflow, but it'll be much quieter, and 5 volts, which will offer maximum cooling performance here. And I kind of want to test them at both. So in this video, I'm going to do a quick assembly, we'll take a look at the case, and then I want to get into some thermal testing. I'm going to test this at the stock clocks, and I'm also going to overclock the Raspberry Pi 4 to 2.1 gigahertz. But the first thing I want to do is install these red decals, and I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera. It does come with two sets, just in case you mess the first one up. So I've got the exterior taken care of, now it's time to move to the internals. First thing I'm going to do is install the fan. This comes with all the hardware you need, plus it comes with this small screwdriver and a fully illustrated assembly guide so anybody could put this together. So I've got the fan taken care of, now it's time to slide the Raspberry Pi inside of here. It actually fits really nicely. I personally just line up that 3.5mm audio jack and it just sits right in here. Next thing I need to do is plug in my fan. Like I mentioned, I'm going with 3.3 volts at first, and if it's just not cutting it, I will up it to 5 volts, but I wanted to keep this as quiet as possible. And once I get this snapped together, we'll take a look at the front here. You can see we do have access to our USB and Ethernet, but it does come with a plate. You could cover this up, but unfortunately, it's going to block off our Ethernet and USB. So I've got everything together. Last thing I need to do is put the four screws in the case itself. It's going to hold everything together, and then we can snap that vertical stand right on the bottom of this case. It looks like everything lined up perfectly. Last thing I need to do is put the stand on the bottom of the case so we can set this up in a vertical orientation. That's really the main reason I wanted to pick this up. And there we have it. Personally, I think this case looks really cool. I think it's going to look really good next to a monitor on a desk. I do wish they would have set up some way to get those USBs out of the back but we can access them from the top here, and we do have full access to the rear I.O., USB Type-C, both micro HDMI ports, and our audio jack. Now that I have everything together, the first thing I want to do is run some thermal tests on this. I'm going to be running Raspberry Pi OS and Stressberry. Alright, so here we are, running Raspberry Pi OS on this Raspberry Pi 4. I've got the fan set at 3.3 volts. We're at the stock clocks, which is 1.5 gigahertz, and basically what this test is going to do is max out all four cores on the Raspberry Pi 4. It's going to give me a log in the background, and by the end, I can create an easy-to-read chart. I'm doing this at the stock clocks right now with the fan set at 3.3 volts, and it's super quiet. I'm about a foot and a half away from it, and I can't hear it. At 5 volts, it's a bit audible, but it definitely cools better. So after this is done, I'm going to run a couple tests with this overclock, and I'll be right back with the charts. So here we are with the test results. Stock is in blue. Maximum we reached at 3.3 volts on that fan was 60 degrees Celsius. Nice and cool. We're not throttling at all. I also tested it with that 2.1 gigahertz overclock. We still didn't hit the maximum temperature here to start throttling, but it is a bit high at 79 degrees Celsius. So I went ahead and bumped the fan up to 5 volts. We're still at 2.1 gigahertz, and the maximum we saw was 71 degrees Celsius. So each one of these tests, we were under that thermal throttle limit, and the Pi was functioning like it should. It's definitely not the best cooling solution that I've tested for the Raspberry Pi 4, but it is keeping us under thermal throttle, even overclocked. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Really appreciate you watching. I think this is a nice looking case. We have those USBs fully accessible from the top here, and as you can see, I've just placed my USB dongle in there. It does stick out of the top a bit, but I don't think it kills the appearance of the whole case by any means at all. 
does a great job cooling at the stock clocks and if you do want to ramp that fan up to 5 volts you can get away with a 2.1 gigahertz overclock it'll run it like that all day but it will get a bit loud at 3.3 volts i cannot hear it but at 5 volts when i'm sitting at my desk it is audible if you have any questions let me know in the comments below and like always thanks for watching